What's up guys? Today we're gonna talk about my experiences with the GFX 100S. Well, the GFX 100S has been sent to me by Fujifilm to just play around and create this video. You get an unbiased review. Well, if that's even possible, since I'm a Fujifilm X photographer, it's quite difficult since I'm really in love with the brand. That being said, I was really, really impressed with the camera. That's not just the camera design, weight, look and feel, but especially, especially the image quality. Now, this video is gonna be pretty long, so do me a favor, hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and hit that little bell notification button. So, let's get started. Well, 102 megapixels, that's a lot. That's roughly four times more than what you get out of a X-T4. And for that reason, your images will be about four times the size. So you get around 100 megabytes raw per image. That's crazy. And I want to show you lots of sample images and we're gonna zoom in as much as we can and you're gonna freak out about all the details that you can find in those images. But we'll do that later. So it's not just the resolution. It's a camera with IBIS, which means that the sensor inside the camera is stabilized. So it's kind of floating to compensate for the shake in your hands. So you can get very long exposures, handheld, that are not blurry. And I've tested it and I was just blown away. I'll show you example images of that later as well. <sighs> Five pictures per second. That's crazy for a medium format camera. And I'm sorry, the camera is not here anymore. <laughs> it has been sent back to Fujifilm just two hours ago, but I do have some B-roll that I can show you right now so you get an idea of the camera. So, well, it's not a big camera, but most of the GF lenses make the system quite big. I, w I just don't want to say big, but bigger than most of you might really think that it would be so it's very well balanced it it feels very good in your hands but it's not as light and as compact as you might be used with your Fujifilm X-T3 or X-T4 or whatever you're using so it's a little bit of an upgrade but yeah I mean check out this comparison that I made between the X-H1 and the GFX 100S both side by side, you can see that the body is not that much bigger, but you can see that the sensor is much bigger. And most of the size difference comes when you look at the lenses. So the GF50 is quite a compact lens. It's my favorite lens, but look at the GF32 to 64. This lens is huge <laughs> and that is true for most gf lenses i mean they have to be that size but it's something that you have to consider so don't just touch the gfx 100s body make sure to get your hands on the gf lenses before you make a decision that's all i'm saying <music> My medium format story started when I got my Phase 1 IQ 180 digital bag on a Mamiya 645 body. I mean, the image quality that this camera and the bag 
produced was amazing. But the camera had a native ISO of 35. So whenever I took it outside, I had to put it on a tripod. So it was quite not the camera that you want to take on a big journey, which I did. I took it to India, I took it to the US, I took it to France, many, many countries. But this has changed with the GFX 100S because it's much more lightweight. <laughs> you can go up with the ISO without any problems. You have face detection, you have Bluetooth, you have all the things that you would really want to see in a modern camera. So these two systems are really not comparable and I have sold that IQ 180 a long time ago. And while we're talking about my experiences with medium format, I have been shooting the GFX 50S in Italy. I have shot the GFX 50R in New York and I love them both. And to be honest, 50 megapixel is already crazy. Um, and that being said, 50 megapixel on a medium format sensor, it's just beautiful. But trust me, the 100 megapixel images will just blow you away. And probably not just you, but also your computer. So be aware of that. These files need a fast computer. Let's talk a little bit about the camera body itself. Now, the camera body has the typical Fujifilm look and feel. It's just beautiful. I mean, look at this camera. You just want to buy it to put it on the shelf, but that will be a total waste. So, of course, you want to shoot with it, but it's just so beautiful. Fujifilm did a great job maintaining its design, its, its beauty, and one of the most reasons that people want to switch to Fujifilm. So, great job there. But they didn't stop there. They also innovated quite some things. So, the grip is really good. It feels almost like a pretty big X-H1. So, really, it feels great in your hands. I mean, you have to go to a shop and try it for yourself so you know what I'm talking about. What I don't like is that they removed the D-pad. I have always enjoyed using the D-pad to go through the menu and stuff like that. And, well, they removed it. There is a joystick, of course, which is redesigned. And you can use the joystick. I think it's just a matter of taste and you're going to get used to it probably. So no D-pad, that's the way it is. <laughs> the battery is the same as you have seen in the X-T4. Battery life, honestly, I haven't tested it because testing battery life is pretty boring. <laughs> Go read it for yourself somewhere on the web, probably somebody tested the battery life. It's good, I didn't have any issues. And that being said, while I was shooting tethered here in the studio, even with an empty battery on a USB-C connection, the camera didn't die. I just kept shooting for four or five hours without any problems. Now let's talk a little bit about the viewfinder. The viewfinder is not detachable like on the GFX 100. So it's fixed. You cannot rotate it. You cannot um, swivel around. It's just there. But that's not an issue and the resolution and the frame rate is not as good as on the GFX 100 but that's also fine. So it's a pretty good viewfinder. It's not the best viewfinder out there but it's totally fine. Let's talk about the display on the top of the camera. You can use that display to display virtual dials like the ISO dial and the shutter speed dial. And honestly, I would have preferred real dials up there, but it's totally fine and you're gonna get used to it. That's my opinion. You can also use the display on top of the camera 
to show a live histogram, which is pretty nice. And you can also use it to get an overview of your settings. That being said, the display can of course be illuminated and the display stays on when you turn the camera off. So it's basically just as you have seen it on the X-H1. Pretty similar. All right, so it's time to check out the ISO and the IBIS performance. I tested both of these in this underground situation. Let's call it like that. So as you can see, I have been using ISO 12800 for this photo to test the ISO performance of the GFX 100S. Now let's zoom in to 100%, which is this magnification. And as you can see, there is not a whole lot of noise. And to be honest, I have been expecting way more noise and it's almost like there is no noise at all, but that's the way it is. So great ISO performance. All of these photos have been taken handheld on the GF50 lens. So let's continue. This photo has been shot at ISO 6400 and one hundredth of a second. So with this shot, I would still expect quite good sharpness handheld. And as you can see, the photo is nice and crisp. Let's continue. So again, I have lowered the ISO 3200 and the shutter is 1 60th of a second. As you can see, still great sharpness. Zoom out and continue. 1 40th, let's skip some images. 1 25th and let's continue even further. 1 6th of a second. Yeah, it's hard, really hard to pronounce that, but <laughs> you can see it down here. One sixth of a second. Still great sharpness. I mean, we're talking handheld 100 megapixel. I'm really blown away by the IBIS performance of this camera. Let's continue. A quarter second exposure. I mean, this image looks the same as all the other shots. I can't see any shake no blurriness nothing <laughs> let's continue half a second i mean come on half a second handheld sharp as a knife i mean check this out come on <laughs> look at the structure of the wall right here it's just crazy and this is 300 percent magnification okay so i got one more shot to share with you one second handheld and you can see i mean the sharpness has decreased a little bit but it's still amazing it's amazing what you can get handheld on this camera and to be honest <laughs> i didn't take any further images while i was on location because i didn't expect one second exposure to be as sharp as that so maybe you can push that even further. Now, as far as IBIS goes, check out this very unscientific test of the IBIS while riding my bicycle. I think it did a really good job. What do you say? Leave a comment. talk about focus speed and focus capabilities and I have done quite some testing and I'm going to show you the results in a few seconds but before I do that I want to clarify that we are talking about a medium format camera and I assume that most of you don't have any experience with medium format so please don't compare medium format performance with APS-C 
or full frame performance. Now, don't get me wrong, the camera is absolutely quick, but it's not as quick as you might be used from a different camera system. But Fujifilm keeps improving their cameras and lenses, so we might see even better performance in the future. So I was impressed, but let's look at some real live testing so you get the idea of what I'm talking about. All right, so here we are in my studio and as you can see, the brightness was not that good. So we had quite some bad light, but still the autofocus is amazingly quick. I had zero issues performing standard focusing tasks. As long as I respected the minimal focus distance, everything was just fine. And to be honest, I didn't expect the autofocus to be that quick. Next, let's test the tracking feature of the GFX100S. And as you can see, I was tracking this beautiful light bulb and I put the camera on AFC to keep it in focus. And as you can see, this works perfectly, even when the subject disappears for a short period of time, it gets back in focus right away the face and eye detection and this works just beautiful and I had zero issues with that and even when the face disappears for a short time it gets back in focus instantly so great autofocus performance in all tests Now the most important part of this whole video is probably about image quality. And to be honest, the main reason why you would buy this camera is image quality. Honestly. I mean, the images that come out of this system, it's, it's a dream come true. Trust me, you just don't want to go back to whatever you have used before. <laughs> you just don't want to go back. Now, let's look at some images so you, that you can see what I'm talking about, because it's hard to talk about image quality. It's just something that you have to see for yourself. <music> Thank you. 
Okay, let's do a really unfair comparison. On the left, you can see a photo taken on the XH1. On the right, you can see a photo taken on the GFX 100S. Now, as you can see, these images don't have the same ratio, which is clear because they have a different ratio on their sensor. But that being said, on this scale, you cannot see any differences, which is obvious, right? So let's zoom in a little bit. And I'm gonna select the left one, the photo of the XH1, and go to 100% magnification. Now, to be honest, you would have to look really, really, really close to see a difference. We need to zoom in further to see actual differences. Now let's do that. So 100% magnification on the XH1 image means 50% magnification for the GFX 100S image. So let's zoom into 100% on the GFX and now we start to see differences. Now, differences are quite obvious on this wall, which is way softer on the left. And of course, in the tree up here, if you compare that, that's also a lot sharper on the GFX, which is something we expected, right? So let's zoom in a little further to see even more differences. The tree looks a lot more detailed on the right. And have a look at that person here. She's not even visible on the XH1 image. No, just joking. So as you can see, this is a pretty unfair comparison, but I just couldn't resist doing it. So it's time for a little conclusion. And I'm saying little because I haven't still made up my mind about all of these impressions that I've had with this camera. I've used it for about two weeks and it was so much fun. And I have taken so many photos with it and it was just pure joy. But it's not just joy, because even though the camera is not expensive, it's still a lot of money and it's still quite an investment that you would have to make to purchase the camera and the lenses that go along with that. But I really suggest you should also think about the use case. So what is the reason why would you want this camera? Is it just something that you want? Or is it really something that you need? So will your customers appreciate the image quality? And are they willing to pay some extra money for that? Because in the end, it creates more work for you. You also have to spend more time in post-production and handling. And if your customer is not ready to pay for that, why would you want to do that? So make sure you think about that before you purchase the camera. And I'm not saying that you should not purchase the camera. I mean, I would love to have this system here. No, no doubt about that. But it creates extra work. It has some extra weight to it. And um, your backpack is gonna become much bigger when you're traveling with that system. So there are really two sides to this story. Amazing system, amazing value for the money, but it's bigger than your current system and it's more heavy and it creates much bigger files that you also need to handle when you're done shooting. So I hope these considerations help you make a good decision. And to be honest, we all want this camera. We all want this system. We all want the best image quality possible. And that's a good thing. I mean, we should always 
look for improvements. But you should also consider what are the reasons that your photography is maybe not where you want it to be. So what's the main reason why your images are not as good as they could be? And most of the time, it's not because of the camera. It's more about lighting. It's more about the concepts. It's more about the opportunities that you need to create in order to make those images. So the camera itself will not create better images without you. That's all for now. I hope this video gave you a good impression on the GFX 100S. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. Make also sure to subscribe to my channel. And um, that's pretty much it. <laughs> Talk to you soon, guys. Thanks for watching. Goodbye. Thank you.